From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we discuss the challenge of having both the quantity and quality sex life you desire and what you can do to begin changing both of those. And there's a quote that's attributed to John Ruskin that says, quality is never the result of an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort. I like that. It's all about taking action. It's all about taking action. Take some action to get that quality. It's all about saying that, that quality takes Effort, effort, right? Which mm-hmm. means that you have to do something over and over again to get to that level of quality. And that's what we're going to be discussing in today's show as it wraps around our sex lives. And, you know, we start each and every one extraordinary marriage show with a hug. And for those of you that may be brand new listeners, welcome. We're so excited to have you. And yeah. you may be thinking, okay, what's this hug thing? Well, a hug's an opportunity for you to hear from someone else in the one family, someone who is experiencing breakthrough or transformation in their marriage. And this week's hug is sponsored by Organifi. And the Organifi products help Tony and I to do what we do with both health and energy. And we can't wait to share more about them a little bit later on in the show. And this hug, it actually came from an email that we received. And the husband starts off saying, a couple of years ago, I started listening to this crazy couples podcast about a couple who had these weekly life experiences that related to me and my wife. Mm. The more I listened to you, the more I realized we had so much in common. They had lived near Spokane. So had we. We went to Hot Springs. So did we. They said their wedding anniversary was October 5th. No way. So was ours. Not often do we find a couple our age married the same day, the same year, and still together. Mm. I meant to send this before our anniversary, but happy late anniversary to you too. Yes. Absolutely. He goes on to say, keep the faith and keep building the kingdom together. I wake up each morning thinking he cannot possibly make us closer as spouses, only to be amazed. And hearing Tony and his bride talk about life, it makes me feel so encouraged. I know how much just listening to the crazy, loving, real, honest couple has made in my life. Sometimes I think couples don't want to make the effort. They don't know what they're missing. All this said, my bride is not much of a podcast listener. She only listens when I say, hey, listen to what TNA said this week. And more times than not, we've had the same conversation. Keep it up. We love your ministry and your hearts. I love it. You know, happy anniversary to you guys as well. That is truly awesome to to hear from another couple married October 5th, 1996. Wow. Awesome. Wow, wow, wow. So good. Yeah, so... It's funny that it's, he was talking about this and, and, you know, the years that he's been listening to the show, we actually, you know, in preparation for this idea around sex, started looking, when was the last time we talked about quantity and quality mm-hmm. when it relates to sex? And, and so I started doing a search just even on our own site. It's episode five was the last time that we talked about quantity and quality when it comes to sex, which would have been February of 2010. Which means a lot has changed in mine and Elisa's life over those years. And what we said way back then, we have like a completely different view and take on it because we've been running the intimacy lifestyle for all those years. Which is just, it's so crazy. And and just as a little side note, for those of you that are brand new listeners, or you've gone back to listen to some of the old shows, what Tony said there is really important. We've been podcasting for eight and a half, almost nine years. So if you hear something that we said in the early years and you're like, that's crazy, you know, what what are are they they talking about? Keep in mind, we were eight and a half years younger. Growth. There's been a lot of growth and maturity. So just, Mm -hmm. just a little side note there, but, but in this idea of quantity and quality, a lot of times in marriage, it really becomes this either or. Which is what we brought up back then. Right. It was, you're either going to have quantity or you're going to have quality. And, you know, we struggled with both. Mm -hmm. Like the first 11 years, like, let me just give you a framework here. This wasn't like, you know, the first month we struggled with it. It was the first 11 years. We didn't have much quantity and the quality. uh, Not so much. Not so much. I mean, every once in a while, maybe there was a, there was a, a glimmer of hope. Maybe one of those, those, those random fireworks that's just sort of going off on its own. 
<laughs> hope and, and just, and then it would fizzle, yep. right? Kind of like a firework. It'd be like, oh, there it is. That elusive, like when all the planets align and, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what do we do? And can we duplicate it? And then you're like, nope. No, apparently not. And, you know, I love the reason I started with that quote at the beginning that that quality is not the result of accident. It's a result of intelligent effort is that it's really hard for couples to have a lot of quality around their sex life when their quantity is not there. When you, know, when there's so much pressure and this was us in the early years of our marriage, you guys, there was so much pressure on every interaction on every sexual intimate moment because especially for Tony, since I was the one doing all the rejecting there, you know, if you don't know when you're going to have sex again, there's a lot of pressure for this to be this one time to be amazing. And I think that's pressure on both sides. The person who is the gatekeeper, you know, saying yes or no rejection or not. And the, the person who is desiring or pursuing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's not just the physical pressure. Like, can I perform, you know, um, can I have an erection? Am I going to have an orgasm? But it's also all the mental pressure, mm, right? Yes. Like, like I gotta get my head in the game. Like we're doing this thing. And, and, and so you get in this place where it's like, <gasps> and what I hear from so many couples is that it almost becomes paralyzing, right? Because that pressure can actually just, well, first of all, physically, it can make all the body systems not work. And emotionally, it can make you say, you know what, if this is, this is too hard, mm -hmm. right? It's easier if we don't, you know, like, like we're good. Like, let's just, let's just keep doing what we're doing. And you know, the other interesting aspect around this whole quantity versus quality argument is that social media and conversations with your friends would have you believing that everybody has these amazing sex lives, right? I've had coaching couples tell me, well, you know what, like, you know, I've talked to my friends, like it's incredible what's going on with them. And, and so my response to that is there are people that have incredible sex lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. But by and large, most people embellish the conversation around their sex life or what they post the same way that they do their posts, right? You're only going to see the highlight reel. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not yeah. going to hear about the, the inability to have an erection. You're not going to hear about vaginal dryness. You're not going to hear about why, because we don't talk about the stuff that isn't working. We only show the highlight reel. And you know, it's, it's creating this atmosphere where couples aren't having sex. They're not having quantity or quality, yeah. like, like none of it. And we actually, we did a, we asked the Instagram audience. And for those of you that don't follow us on Instagram, just, you know, pull it up, go to at one extraordinary marriage. We do these informal polls often because we want to get a pulse on what's going on with you guys. With the one family. Yeah. You know, I, there are lots of times that I'll look at research and we'll pull stuff from other places and, and that's great. But I want to know, Tony and I want to know what, what's happening for the one family. What are the struggles that you're facing? And so, you know, we put out this question, what's the biggest struggle when it comes to your sexual intimacy? And overwhelmingly, like last time I looked, it was like 66% of folks said that it was quantity. Mm, over quality. Over quality. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, because it's like, the, the, you know, what, which comes first, quantity or quality? What, you know, in this case with sex, a lot of times it is quantity. And, and you know, the, the other part of that is that it's not that everybody wants to be sexually active every day. Correct. Right? There's this especially amongst women, I think more than men, there's this idea, well, my husband wants to have sex every single day. And the truth is, guys, we get emails all the time from, from folks, even men who are like, I don't even need to have it every day. I would just like to know that my wife desires me. Mm -hmm. and, and this does go both ways, just as an FYI. We didn't, we didn't poll to see who was a husband or who was a wife in this. But having been at this for as long as we have, there is, I would say a 50, 50 split mm -hmm. of men who do not desire sex are the ones who are rejecting their spouse, their wife, as much as the other side, which is the wife rejecting her husband. I mean, we actually, we got a message this week from a husband who said, you know, a little bit tongue in cheek, but with a lot of pain as well. He's like, no man's ever died from lack of sex. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's true. No person has ever died from a lack of sex, but, but why isn't that a vital part 
of your marriage. Why can't, why can't we as married couples look at this and say, why can't we have quantity and quality? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, as, as we prepared for this, it's, you know, around this idea of saying, when did sexual intimacy not become something that we believe is vital in our marriages? Right. Because, you know, between husband and wife, that's, that's the most intimate act that the two of you share. I mean, you know, it's, it's that joining of, of body, you know, mind, spirit, and soul. Right. And, and when did we get into this place where, where we're like, yeah, you know, I can take it or leave it. Right. And, and yet your spouse is like, I don't want to leave it. I want to be with you. Obviously, 60%, 66% are saying quantity is their biggest struggle right now. Like, could we have a little bit more, please? Mm-hmm. You know, I think of, of the old Oliver movie where, you know, Oliver, you know, in the orphanage takes his little bowl of, of, you know, gruel or whatever it is. And he's like, can I have some more, please? And, and in all honesty, that's what a lot of spouses out there are saying. Can I have some more, please? Not a lot. Like, just just a little more. Mm-hmm. That, that, that attention to... Gosh, that physical attention, that sexual connection, I mean, even in our marriage, and we do the intimacy lifestyle and have been doing it for nine plus years now. Gosh, you know, when when Elisa will have her period, I find this for us because that's a time when we do not have sex. And we've discussed this before, but it's it's one of those times where Elisa just is a no-go and we've agreed upon that. And yet it's it's crazy because sometimes we'll have sex maybe two days before she starts her period and then she'll have her period. And then, so by the time it's done and we have sex again, man, it can be about a week. Yeah. I was going to say a full seven days. And I think Elisa would agree as well that there's this, this lack of connection and we sense it, you know, we, we sense that like, wow, we're, we're doing life as a married couple. We're walking around, we're holding hands, we're talking, we're going on date nights, we're doing our thing, coffee breaks, whatever it may be. And yet there's that peace where we need and we, we desire that physical touch, that skin on skin. And the two of you were designed for that, right? Mm-hmm. It's the reason our bodies fit together. Mm-hmm. We were designed to have that, you know, and, and this whole idea about, you know, the sexual intimacy, just being about the sex, that's not true. Right. So for those of you who are like, oh, it's just about the sex. Let me tell you something. There are some serious benefits to having sex. It does boost your libido. The more you do it, I can't tell you how many people have done the seven days of sex challenge. And they're like, you know, it's funny. I like found myself wanting more sex. Mm -hmm. And those who've gone farther along and all of a sudden they end up at 14, 21, 30 day sex challenges. And they're just like, right on. We started with seven and now we just finished 30. You know, so it boosts your libido. It helps to relieve stress. Some of you that are really, really super stressed and you can't remember the last time you had sex, you might need to have sex. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just putting it out there. Like we've shared when when Tony's dad, a year ago when Tony's dad was was dying and, and we were going through, you know, just after the funeral and all this kind of stuff. I mean, Tony, I remember seeing Tony, like I can visualize this as if it was yesterday. Tony is on one side of the bed. I'm on the other side of the bed. We're getting ready to go to bed. And he's like, hey, I just want you to know, I'm like, super, super stressed. And I think I'm going to need more sex. A- and in my mind, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like we're going through all this stuff, but I didn't say that. Sometimes you just got to know when to hold your tongue. A- and I was just like, okay, like if you're telling me this is a stress reliever and there are so many of you that sex is a stress reliever. So that quantity component actually improves the quality of your life. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't just look at this as quantity versus quality when it comes to sex. Be thinking about what happens if the quantity shifts. Well, how will this improve the quality of our marriage? Mm -hmm. Right. That that's a free one. I hadn't even planned on sharing that with you guys today. But those two things are related. Right. As you start to look at this and and there's just a little bit of of just other science that I want to share with you in terms of of her body, you know, and so talking about quantity and quality. Ladies, the more frequently that you have sex, there is more natural lubrication that is created, Mm -hmm. right? Please also keep the lubricants on your nightstand. I'm just saying it's good to have them handy. And we have seen that in you. Oh, that is like I am a walking billboard for this right here. The years that we were having sex so infrequently, it was like the Sahara Desert down there. I was just like, got nothing. 
right? And when we started really embracing the lifestyle, when this just became how we, like I more times than not do not struggle with natural lubrication, like throughout my cycle, Mm -hmm. not just around ovulation when your body is like, Hey, make a baby. But throughout the month, I'm like, I remember having these thoughts of going, when did this happen? What happened when we got really regular Mm -hmm. and, and changed the quantity, the quality of my physical health changed. It also ladies, as you you engage in more frequent sex, it strengthens your pelvic floor muscles. Those are the ones that control leakage and orgasm. Mm -hmm. Hello. We like those to be strong. It also as a couple gives you more knowledge about how things work and what works for the two of you. Because again, like we said at the top of the show, you know, when you're doing it so infrequently that it literally feels like you're shooting darts blindfolded after you've been spun around three times and you're just hoping to make a bullseye. That's what it's like when you have sex like every six weeks. And here's an interesting thing. You bring that up. And from a guy's perspective, from my perspective, I was, I was talking to a husband the other day and we were talking about this and I don't know how it came up, but we began to talk about it. And I said, you know what? The thing is now for me personally, that there's no like... And I want to say almost like a guilt and, and a shame when it comes to uh, quick ejaculation, mm-hmm. a quick, you know what I mean? Because I remember those days back when, where we were having sex infrequently, that if I did ejaculate quickly, it was just like, dang it. Like that was my one opportunity for the next month. Where now the foreplay, the, the high, the high sexual activity there mm-hmm. that happens that when we do penetrate, when I do have, when we do have penetration that, Hey, if I ejaculate quickly, it's no big deal. You know? And we, and he and I were just talking about that. Like, wow, there's no, and it's no big deal anymore because it's like, all right, well, cool. We're, we, for you and I, you know, we have sex twice a week. It's cool. Well, well you and I are going to have sex in a few days. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that's a big component of it. The quality of your marriage will shift with the quantity because it does relieve that pressure, mm-hmm. right? Of, of not every single time has to be, you know, fireworks and, and, you know, earthquakes, you know, just shaking the ground. You can just have those times where you're like, I just want to be close to you. Like, let's do this thing. And, and you know, orgasm, don't orgasm. It's fine because this isn't going to be the only time, you know, this month that we have sex. Right. Right. And, and you know, I wonder, I wonder what it would look like in our marriages, if we began to embrace the idea, and for some of you, this is actually going to push a few buttons, but I'm still going to go there anyhow, that if we embrace the idea that our sexual intimacy, that being sexually intimate with our spouses is as vital to our marriages as doing laundry, buying groceries or paying the bills, that, that doing those things, yeah, while it's important and we like have to check off and it's got to be done all the time. What if we said this was so much more important than that? And actually the return on investment for engaging in that one particular activity is better than making sure that there are clean clothes is better than making sure that the bills are paid. Please pay your bills, get food in the house. But what I'm saying is, is that that making that investment in the connection with our spouses, it's going for quantity and quality Mm -hmm. is so much more important than all of the other distractions that we allow ourselves to get, to get wrapped up in. And, you know, we want to share how to get the quantity and the quality and how to take your sexual intimacy to the next level and and looking at, you know, just also the sexual health, because I know for us, you know, it's not just, you know, thinking about these things, it's also being physically healthy. And that's where, you know, feeling and feeling good and feeling good. Yeah. And, And that's where, you know, we want to definitely make sure to thank our sponsor Organifi because this is a company that is all about you being healthy, mm-hmm. right? About you having the energy and, and being able to find all of those right combinations of ingredients that are going to be both healthy and energizing for you, right? It, it, it's why we make sure that all of the Organifi products literally have a counter space in our kitchen, especially the red juice. Yeah. Love that red juice, especially midday best thing for you, man. Well, midday or even an afternoon, pick me up. If you know that you're going to be having that special rendezvous with your spouse when you, you want to be That's healthy, right. right? And you want to be energized and you know, you owe it to yourself to see what these products can do for you. And with a 60 day money back guarantee, you've got nothing to lose. So visit Organifyshop.com. And I'm going to spell that out for you. It's O R G 
A-N-I-F-I-S-H-O-P.com and enter promo code one at checkout and you're going to receive 20% off your entire order. It's an investment in your health that's good for you and for your marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for a lot of you, this feels like such a heavily weighted conversation, right? This idea of talking through, you know, how, how do we talk quantity and quality? Because maybe you're the high desire spouse and you're like, if I bring this up, this is going to be... It's going to backfire. It's going to backfire. You know? Yeah. Because it's it's totally going to backfire. You're, you're sitting here going, if I bring it up, he or she is not going to listen. They're going to say, you know what? We're fine. And and there's no worse thing to hear, honestly. When when your spouse says, I'm fine. Oh, or we're fine. Or we're fine. You, you know, it's just like the door just got shut on you. Mm-hmm. Been there. And... and you know, part of this is approaching this from how do we meet each other's needs, mm-hmm. right? Because again, it's not just about quantity and quality when it comes to sex. It's about, let's look at the quality of our marriage across the board. You know, it's like a car that's only functioning. Uh, this is going to be for all you car people out there. Um, just, you know, play along with Elisa. So let's say a car has six cylinders, but only five of them are functioning. The car's not going to go as well as it would if it had all six cylinders functioning. That's right. So this six cylinder is your sexual intimacy, right? It's looking at this and saying, how do we relieve the stress in our marriage around this topic? And, and for some of you, that's going to be the intimacy lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? It's going to be saying, okay, what, what kind of plan can we put together? And that's a great one. So here's the biggest thing. Elisa and I have been doing this for like I said, nine plus years for us, two times a week is great. We're happy with it. We, we have our bonus day on Saturday. So that picks it up to three times a week. And that happens. I would say one or two times a month. Mm-hmm. We're cool. I was talking to a husband the other day and he's like, yeah, you know, for us, we really want to be around four times mm-hmm. a month or a week. a week. And I'm like, wow. Okay. So how did you set it up? And for them, the way they set it up, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, They take Monday off and Tuesday off. They go Wednesday and then Thursday's off and then they start it again. And so they, they looked at their calendar and they saw that they, they wanted to have that quantity, which would increase that quality. And lo and behold, as he and I are discussing this, there's no more frustration between them anymore. You know, the quality part of it, which used to be sort of a, like, uh, just, it, it was frustrating, is now amazing. So both together working at this and looking at this, we're able to come up with a plan. And it took them some time though. I want to say that as well. For these guys, they tried a number of different ways until they hit on this one that has worked for them. And that's, that's what's so key is to really customize this to what's going to work for the two of you to have those conversations. And I just want you to know, like we made an intimacy lifestyle planner for the one family, mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah. And, and you can check that out at one extraordinary marriage.com slash I L planner stands for intimacy lifestyle planner. Um, because this is a resource, right? You may be going, I don't even know how to get this conversation started. Well, like let's, let's look at it on a sheet of paper, right? Let's actually understand what this looks like for us. And and so for some of you, that's going to be where the conversation gets started. How can we relieve stress? How can we please each other? What does this look like? Right? Because this is the most vital act between a husband and wife. And some of you are going to have to look at what your mindsets are around sex, right? Some of you have these beliefs about sex and marriage that, that, you know, it doesn't have to happen that frequently right? That, that it's good. We're, as long as everything else is good, we don't need to have sex. Some of you, you know, just have beliefs about sex in general, right? Messages that you heard from years ago, things that you saw, maybe, you know, watching porn or things like you've got all of this stuff in your headspace about what sex is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to figure out how does this work in marriage? I mean, like I had a coaching client um, that I've been working with and like, they didn't even talk about sex. You guys, when I first started working with them. Wow. Like they weren't talking. It was very uncomfortable. She didn't want to. Mm-mm. I had a coaching call with them just this past week. I've been working with them for like five weeks. Right. And so, you know, we're talking about how things are going. She's like, she goes, you know, Elisa, we actually, we like, I'm good talking about sex now. And, and no joke, you guys, my jaw wow. dropped. I mean, they, she's been doing a lot of work 
to, to get to a place where she's comfortable to breaking through some of those mindsets, you know, about sex and what it looks like and about body image and stuff like that. Like this wasn't, and it's not, it's not done, right? The work isn't done, but she's got breakthrough. That's awesome. Right. Because you got to look at those mindsets. And, and for those of you that are like, Oh, I'm just stuck in my own head. Or my, maybe, you know, our marriage is stuck in our own heads. It might be time to think about coaching. You, you may have been like pushing up against this wall for so long. You're like, how do we get breakthrough on this? And if that's, if that's you and you're like, yeah, it's time to consider coaching. Mm-hmm. And you can check that out at oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash coaching. But you know, as you're in this place, because a lot of you have been sitting here listening to the show and you're like, we've got one, but not the other. Or maybe like a lot of people that just DM'd us on Instagram this past week, you're like, it's actually both. Or I'm in and they're not. You know, this is, this is the week that you sit down and you say, what can I do, right? It's been the hashtag for this entire year for the one family. There's a reason we keep coming back to it because instead of looking at what your spouse can do, like you need to have sex with me more or you need to, you know, orgasm or, or you need to, you know, you need to. It's time to look at this situation and say, okay, what, what can I do? And I would say, if you're the one who's the gatekeeper, you're the one holding back, this is, this is to you as well. Why? Why are you doing that? Because we hear a lot of times from the spouse who is desiring more and, and, and more quality sex. But for those of you who are the ones that are saying, eh, like, like Elisa, she was the one who would would reject me and it, it, she could take it or leave it. Leave it. it was like French fries, you know, at ordering a McDonald's. You want, you want large, extra large. What do you want? I don't care. You know what I mean? But for you, I think that this is where the big one comes in because you really have to begin to look at yourself and the mindset that you, you've placed on sex and around that sexual intimacy with your spouse. Mm-hmm. And are you willing to break free of that and, and try something new, get outside of your comfort zone and get into a new place to somewhere that may be much, much better than where you've been. And yeah, it may be a little scary. Been there. We, we've we been there. We, we get it. It, it. It's Let me tell you this. It's not going to be all roses and unicorns and, and fireworks. You, you're going to have some struggle in it. But in the struggle comes the diamond, mm. Right. That's the the diamond in the rough is because diamonds are created because of all the force and the pressure that's created. It's coal. And most of you wouldn't wear coal on your finger, on your finger. You you want a diamond. Well, that diamond was formed through pressure and force and working its way through. And that's the same thing you have to do. There's a diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. There is. And when it comes to your sexual intimacy, both the quality and the quantity of it, you can have both, and yet are you willing to go through that, to have it? Because we believe you do, and we believe you can. It's just are you willing to step to the plate and start the intimacy lifestyle with your spouse? Mm-hmm. And you know, the last thing that I kind of want to add, just as you're talking about that, and is this idea, can I or can't I? And the truth is, is that you can. Mm-hmm. You can do something different. You can look at your marriage and your sexual intimacy in a new way. You can break free of the mindsets. You can find healing and rebuild trust if that's been the reason that you haven't had the quantity or the quality. You can step into a new season just because your marriage has been this way where it's been an either or or a neither. You can step into a place where you have the and. It just takes making that first step. Right. So often our own headspace keeps us from taking the first step. And yet, you know, what we've learned is that you don't have to settle for good. So many people say, you know what, we've got a good marriage. We've got a good marriage. Maybe we're not being a sexually intimate. We're good. But what if because of this conversation, your marriage went from good to great? Yeah, go for it. This week, you guys, it's not about quality or quantity. It is quantity and quality. You can have both. And that's something that Elise and I have learned over the years. And we believe that you can do the same. Start the intimacy lifestyle. Pick up the intimacy lifestyle planner. Begin that journey today. We love you guys. We're excited for what's ahead. It may even mean that you're going to take a jump of faith this week and start your own seven days of sex challenge. We're believing in it. We are we are just excited for you. If you need anything from us, don't hesitate to reach out at info at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. We love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we'll catch you next week. Love you guys.